What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Back here live. I was summoning uh, the drag, uh, maybe like the Red Queen, Red Witch. I don't know. Melisandre. You were raising all the White Walkers. Oh, I was raising the White Walkers. That's what it is. There you go. Uh, welcome back to another edition of Collider TV Talk live here every single day on Collider Video, 11 a.m. PST. I'm your host, Josh Makuga. Uh, we have an amazing show planned for you today. Before we get into that, I'd like to welcome, as always, my the mother of ginger dragons, Grace Hickha. Oh, hey. Twitter questions at Mrs. Grace Face Collider uh, TV Talk hashtag once again nailing that intro. <laughs> you are Who's crushing this it. guy. This guy. <laughs> it's America's favorite favorite TV Talk panelist. That's David Griffin. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? What's up, man? Yeah, Happy to back. be back, dude. Been, I know, since I Monday. You. It's been a yeah, while. It's been yeah. A long time. Well, it's usually Monday, Tuesday, David Griffin. That's true. But know, we had the lovely Allison Keene. We did. Yeah, so I like threw off our groove that we had. That's all right. Yeah, like a week and a half. She is the king of queen of television. Queen of TV. Yeah, she's cool as hell. Collider.com. Yeah, she crushed it. It was. Uh, it was a really good episode, but I'd just like to have you back because today, David, we are treating the fans to the first ever Great British Breakdown starring David Griffin in, in his prime time slot of talking British TV. This is very exciting because yes. Emma's had her MMMMMMA show. Yes. Yeah. And I've been kind of jealous of that. I haven't had like my own segment, so this is, I get to have my own segment And today. we will tease your theme song when it comes. Yes. But we do have a little bit of Very a theme exciting. song for David, though uh, your attire for the Great British Breakdown. Yeah, today, it's, a, it's a little American. It's almost like "f you redcoats and demon revolution." <laughs> America. Yeah. Sorry, um, I, I should have worn something more uh, British. The Loudmouth Golf actually has some uh, Union British, Jack? yeah, Union Jack pants. Well, oh, we may have to get, to get some, some of those. Yeah, may have to get, get David some, some Union pants. Jacks. Yeah, and then we'll fight like uh, it'll, we'll actually fight like it's the uh, yes. Revolutionary War. Yes. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right, Grace, what is first on the docket today? All right. So first of all, HBO dropped some stills from the next episode of Game of Thrones, episode five. Mm. Um, obviously, the last episode, the spoils of war, was complete insanity and was yeah. amazing on all levels. What are you guys looking forward to in episode five? Well, I will say, based on these pictures, uh, we're getting a lot of brooding. A lot of, yeah. a lot of <laughs> staring into the distance. A lot of yeah. uh, into the distance. Looks like serious conversations, probably yep. not about what they had at Chipotle. The that night is before. a well-made bed. That is really a well-made well bed. That bed uh, is well -made. I like we the color scheme. Sam and Gilly doing their nighttime yep. reading. Nighttime reading. <laughs> uh, yep. Bedtime stories. Yeah. What did I see Gilly in? She was in... Oh, I saw the movie Detroit. Oh, she's in Detroit. She's in Detroit. Yeah. Interesting. And I also saw... I did a double feature. I don't know why I'm talking about movies. Sorry. Yeah. I, saw, I saw the Dark, dark Tower <laughs> in Lagatha. Ah. Catherine Winnick was in the Dark Tower. Some she was the Vikings. mom. Yeah, there you go. yeah, TV and movies. All right, let's go. Oh, Game of Thrones. Sorry. <laughs> Look, David, this is TV talk. Sorry, sorry. Not well, movie talk. <laughs> um, no, uh, listen, after last, I, I, the, the picture that grabs me most out of this is Tyrion Lannister walking right. through the, the uh, ashes. Me too. Yeah. And, you know, seeing his people slain. He's got to find his bro. Down. I know. I'm most excited to see him and Jamie's Mercedes. reunion. Yes. Like, I'm I'm so thrilled. And I know they, they kind of made it seem like, is Jamie okay? He's yeah. in he's the water and he's in none of the promos, but he's fine and they're going to re reunite. I will be say, nope. someone, assume, this, is, this is not a joke. Someone who was actually drowned in their life uh, and... If you have, if you're wearing battle armor, it's a lot harder to swim than you think. Well, yeah, well, sure. Well, but sure. You know I mean, it's like hundred pounds. I know this is a fantasy. I'm being, I'm being silly. I'm nitpicking. I know this is Good. a fantasy series. <laughs> he was in like maybe knee deep, horse knee deep water. He gets knocked off his horse. Look, he's like sinking to the bottom of the ocean. I'm like, <laughs> how deep is that water? Well, you don't know. It, yeah. there, was a, there was a drop off. There was a continental shelf in that river. That's yeah, true. it was That's one true. of the yeah, yeah, That's yeah. True. One it, of the it's tectonic like the plates. Correct. Yeah, it's like the abyss. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Game of Thrones this Sunday. <laughs> uh, it's Game of Thrones season, guys. Uh, you know what the yeah. beautiful part about this is? We go straight from Game of Thrones into NFL football. It doesn't get much better. Oh, football. That's, That's sports. Precisely but hey, don't forget European football. Chelsea's first match is Saturday morning against Burnley. Ah, oh my God! Big. You yeah. guys are so yeah. adorable. So right I'm, now. I'm not talking about that in the Great British Breakdown, but oh, that's right. We can talk about that. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Today on about that. Football Talk. <laughs> um, so coming up next, the Coen Brothers announced that their six-part anthology, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, is going to air on Netflix mm. next year, and each feature or each chapter is going to feature a distinct story about the American West, and will star Tim Blank Nelson. There you go. Well, we, we we had talked about this. First yeah. of all, Coen Brothers are awesome. Second of all. We were talking about this when they kind of announced it and what it would do and where it would land. And all of us kind of said collectively this should land at a streaming and or right. premium cable thing. And like the lowest, not lowest, I shouldn't say that, but like the, the least risky move would probably be FX as far as, far as like broadcast sure. TV goes. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the fact that it lands at Netflix kind of gives people like the Coen brothers who are creative geniuses the right to just be like, listen, whatever you give us is totally fine. Yeah. Just, right. you know, and, and the, the title is 
you know that sells that sells me right away. I couldn't care less what it's about. Battle yeah, I mean, I think we know as long as there aren't robots in this old west, I'm fine. Robots. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, or I think robots. this is a re- I think this is a really good fit for the Coen mm-hmm. Brothers. What do you think? Well, I think because HBO and Netflix, we know that they let their creators do what they want to do. I mean, I don't know what David Simon's doing with the Deuce, but. They're letting him be David Simon and do what he wants to do. <laughs> Same with Treme or The Wire. Yeah. So I'm excited that they're with Netflix. They took out $20 billion. They have $20 billion in debt. Right. Not because they're in financial trouble, because they're trying to build this empire. Yeah. They have so many thousands, millions of subscribers. And this is a great flagship for them, I think. I mean, they have the crown. They have these big budget shows. But something that the Coen brothers are doing, that's a big name yeah. behind a, a new I mean, property. Like, yeah. You know, it's HBO huge. had Martin Scorsese yeah. and Boardwalk Empire. Right. Netflix getting the Coen brothers is a huge, it's huge. step. Yeah. Huge mm-hmm. step. All right. What's next? Great. All right, and then, so yesterday was the FX Summer TCA panel, and FX is absolutely dominating television yeah. right now, and there were so many things that came up. I didn't, we're going to cover a lot of things, but first of all, there is going to be a Deadpool animated series that's going to mm-hmm. go straight to series with 10 episodes next year, and it's going to be, the showrunners are going to be Donald Glover and his brother, Stephen Glover. Yeah. And I'm thrilled. First of all, they said it's going to be nothing like the movie, which mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Different tone, they different said. Different tone, tone yeah. but mm-hmm. still, from those dudes who crushed it with Atlanta, um, yeah, they're geniuses. This is awesome. Because there's shows like Archer on yeah, FX. Yeah, exactly, which is, which is Emmy nominated. Yeah, genius show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, there, there, there are animated series that I love to watch, and then there are animated series. No offense to MMMation, but I don't watch. <laughs> like, I don't watch animated because I want adult animated stuff. I want the humor to be like An BoJack adult. Horseman or Family Guy or right. something like that. Me too. And I couldn't be happier about a Deadpool animated series. That, on FX? Awesome. Just hearing John yeah, Landgraf. Yeah, it's the perfect home for Yeah, it. just hearing him talk about Donald Glover's schedule is insane. Yeah. He's apparently yeah. already written All season two of, of Atlanta. Two. And now he's, you know, filming a Han, Han Solo, Solo movie, but the, he's going to have time to work on Deadpool while he's over in London. I mean, the, the schedule is insane. Yeah. He's working. Oh, yeah. You come home from set 12 hours and like, hey, we got to write four episodes of Deadpool. And he's like, come on, bros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Give him a minute, break. And then, I mean, has there been, like, is Ryan Reynolds at all? There's been no word on what his involvement is. No, it's going to be a different yeah. voice. different. Totally. So it's, uh, it's going to totally be a different. totally different show, which is great. Just yeah. like. Uh, Spider-Man does the same thing. There's some Spider-Man right. shows on Disney XD that they have that are completely different from the Spider-Man movie universe. So. And Very then cool. my favorite show is, uh, you know, Saul Spider-Man, Attorney at Law. And yeah. he's, a, <laughs> he's a lovely Jewish man that yeah. lives mm-hmm. in Queens. And uh, he's got a, an okay practice that his family supports, but they're not super excited about. Three kids that aren't really in love with him, but they're like, okay, they more use him for his money. And a wife that is like, okay with mm-hmm. their marriage. Saul Spider-Man, this fall on Fox. Another, right. uh, sorry, <laughs> another thing too, I mean, just going down, looking at this list here, um, just John Landgraf just giving his creators freedom to work and not to rush them, which is so yeah. important, not to rush your creators. That's what HBO does so well. Uh, also, in looking at Fargo. Right, you know, yeah, and this is literally what he said about yeah. Fargo. They were like, what about Fargo season four? And he said, quote, I hope so. I haven't heard. We haven't heard the idea from Noah, but it would be nice. If he has a good idea, you're right. <laughs> That's literally That's awesome. what the quote was. Your boss like, is like, your wife? You. I don't know. She disappeared two years ago, but I haven't heard anything yeah. bad. Right. So. Like, it's he was very thing, much... It's like, the same thing, uh, Kirby Enthusiasm. Yes. Right. When Dave, Larry David is ready to do a season, whether it's three or four years, they'll let him do a season when he's ready to. Yeah. Yeah. And and he's insane. Noah Hawley is doing two features right now, mm-hmm. and he's obviously doing the second season of Legion right now. So it's kind of like Donald Glover. It's like their schedules are. I don't know and when these guys eat, sleep, or shower. Right. Much and like myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you look. I don't do any of those things. Um, the, the thing that gets me about Fargo and Noah Hawley and all this kind mm-hmm. of stuff is season three was probably my least favorite of the three seasons, but it was still fantastic yes. television, it's right? It's solid, it was, yeah. It's it was so amazingly solid. fun TV. The, the thing that John Landgraf said, which I agree, is that Noah hasn't just found the story that he's really passionate about. And I think after three seasons of true crime in just this area of the country, you really have to find something that is going to wow the audience. Because for me, season two was like, holy shit, how much bigger can this get? And then season three was a tiny step back. Mm-hmm. So to bring season four back around, you know, I, I, I appreciate the holdout. Yeah, yeah it's like, don't rush yeah. it. Because he dropped the mic at Comic Con, being like, yeah, "I'm going to make a Doctor Doom movie." Yeah, you yeah, know? no, so he's, he's a busy guy. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Busy. yeah, exactly. And then two more on sure. that, Grace. Uh, yeah, we have the Hurricane Katrina um, American Crime Story from Ryan Murphy. He announced also yesterday that there's going to be a total creative pivot, and that mm. Ryan Murphy is going to announce it later. Yeah, and we don't really so we're know gonna what get it's going to be first. Yeah, because they decided to swap, even though they shot this first. Yeah. So you know, I don't know. I don't know if the actors they have a lot of big names like Annette Bening. I don't know if they're going to be able to come back mm-hmm. now that they're doing this whole creative switch. Yeah. But it's all exciting. And and does anyone have any thoughts? I, well, I I think all of us were a little because the first one with OJ was so great. Yeah. And then Hurricane Katrina. Listen, if you watch Treme, they did Hurricane Katrina really, really well. So it's kind of like treading on old thing. I didn't know exactly what they were doing, but it didn't get me super excited. The Versace one, on the other hand, did get me excited. Mm-hmm. 
the fact that they're doing a pivot means to me they have no idea what they want to do with it. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, it's kind of like they were like, oh, yeah, somebody did just do that. Like, we got to completely right. revamp this whole thing. It's a business term. Yeah. But Landgraf said he has faith that it's going to happen. Yeah. One way yeah, or another. Yeah, oh, no, episode I mean, six. Ryan Murphy's, like, on fire. Yeah. Like, he has, like, 49 yeah. shows like, in production. Episode six coming to me, like, yo, you know they did this on Tremaine? He's like, what's Tremaine? I was like, and then, <laughs> I was, he, was the he, only he, guy that watched the show. You see Ryan Murphy go home and watch Tremaine, he's like, oh, crap. He's like, oh, something different. We've got to do something different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, creative pivot. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also Louis updates season Same thing. six. And Land- Same this thing. is what yeah. Landgraf said about Louis. He goes, I really don't have any updates on season six. I think it's possible there will never be another season of Louis. And I think it's also possible there will be four or five more seasons of Louis <laughs> over the next 30 years. Yeah. I, I love Louis. what Louis, Louis said. You know, he, he, he's realizing that he's a, a different comedian now. He's one of the highest yeah, paid he's comedians such a in the world. Than yeah. When I so he can't keep playing like the broke, struggling comedian all yeah. the time. Yeah. And that's the funniest shit, too, uh, especially in that like small apartment with his kids and everything yeah. in New York. It, it he's is, not struggling. Louis no, not struggling. Louis is not yeah. struggling. I think he was number two last year. Seinfeld made seventy five million, and Louis made like. I'm sorry, he's not number. I didn't mean I said one of the highest because no. number one's Kevin Hart. I no, no, Kevin no. Hart I just, the, the, the list just got released three days ago. Oh, really? Kevin uh, Hart's Kevin three. Hart. He's Kevin only three. three. Yeah, because wow. he's not touring. He's oh, just doing okay. movies. Okay. You know, and you can't yeah. consider. But That's true. Louis's selling out stadiums, man. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. He's not poor. <laughs> no, he's not poor. <laughs> he's not like poor. he is in the show. <laughs> like he is in the show. Like struggling. he definitely gets the guac at Chipotle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He does. <laughs> the guac at Chipotle. <laughs> it costs extra. It's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but we know. But Stop reminding us. We know. We get it. And also, they just released queso. So screw you, guacamole. I'm coming in hot with queso. So it's still extra. All right, what's next, Grace? <laughs> All right, so next we're going to talk about the pilot last night aired for Mr. Mercedes, which is based on the Stephen King crime thriller starring Brendan Gleeson. And it's on AT&T's Audience Network, yeah. which is, like, kind of cool. I absolutely adored this. I thought this was That's excellent. That's the wrong word, I think, for it. Adored this? I adored this. I thought it was such an elegant pilot. I thought it was so well done. I was so... Brendan Gleeson can do no wrong. He is such a dynamic actor. I was telling you, he would literally... There could be a series about him eating Snickers, and I'd be like... <laughs> oh, eat it I'd again. be, like, Take the binging the shit out of okay. it. He's great. I, the reason I say adore is because this is one dark fucking show. I know, but that's like my jam. But I know it is, but also, too, there were some amazingly funny moments in the show in a really dark, sinister, creepy kind mm. of way, a la the neighbor giving him a, a nudie she photo on her phone. She is fantastic. There, she is the MVP of she this is, show. She's she, she a winner that's ready to go. Yes. <laughs> She's ready to go. She's just like, listen. She's DTF, yeah, as they she say. Is so and she, and her, she looks great. She, she does. Yeah, she looks great. Yeah, yeah. She's hilarious. I, I tell you what, I wasn't, I didn't want to talk about this show. And David, Oh. You texted me and said, "Let's yeah. watch this." Well, it's, because it's Brendan, Gleason. David. Brendan Gleason, but and no, David I'm Kelly. You did. David e. Kelly wrote this, the screenplay yeah, for this. Yeah, he's incredible. I agree with all of what you're saying. Okay. Okay. As hmm. soon as something says based on a Stephen King oh, that's, novel, yeah, the horror, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. Except for the Shawshank. Except for the Shawshank. Shawshank, Green oh, sure. Mile, yeah. or you know. But this is also one of those. There's nothing supernatural in this at all. Correct. Like, there's not creepy. I mean, other there than just human nature, which is creepy enough. There was a clown mask. Right. There was a clown mask. But I think you can handle this. I'm watching this full well. I was like, all right, this is the Stephen king that i can mm-hmm. tolerate because this show is awesome yes. and unfortunately and i mean i don't want to say unfortunately but a, sh- uh, a channel like audience network on at&t which is premium to a certain extent uh if you have you know uverse or you have whatever it's free with your uverse but for other people you have to actually purchase this channel and a show like kingdom mm-hmm. which is watched by very few people which is an amazing so, amazing like television four show. seasons right four, three four, it just finished four, and oh. series finale after okay. three seasons yeah. um about MMA here in California. Mm -hmm. It was so well done. Frank Grillo, the cast was just fantastic. Mr. Mercedes is one of the shows that probably won't give an Emmy nomination, but just Mm -hmm. based off the pilot, if you're not hooked by the pilot, I don't know if you're watching the same show we're watching. Right. It's so complex. I mean, I love the the young guy who's playing uh, Mr. Mercedes. You, you get the you know who the the villain is right early away. on. So it's not really a spoiler mm-hmm. to say he was in Penny Dreadful. He played yeah. Doctor Frankenstein in Penny Dreadful. He's a very good British. It's funny, like the two leads in here, Brendan Gleeson from the UK. You know, and yeah, yeah, uh, it's like that on man. most shows. But it's great. I love that they don't change his accent. Yeah, he's in Ohio. He's got the same accent he's always had, and that's great. He's Scottish, I believe. You know, he right? came yeah, over 25 great. years ago to work as an American. Yeah, cop we, we, we don't need Scotland. an explanation. We yeah. don't need to change his accent. He's, not he's, he's fine. Yeah, I love it. Um, <laughs> it's it's so twisted, like Mr. Mercedes' relationship with his mom, and that's oh weird. Oh my god! It's super yeah, I was dark. not prepared. They for don't that. shy away from any of that, and it's really it was like that was one of the most uncomfortable scenes I've seen in a while. It wasn't like. You know, there's no blood or anything. It's just weird, like stuff with your mom. And like that would like, put like Norma Bates. Like Norma Bates would have blushed watching. Well, Bates that Motel scene. looks like, weak. Even though I, I like yeah. Bates Motel, that looks weak compared to what's going on in this show. I was like, oh my god, it's some creepy stuff. Yeah. Well, in the subplot with like the guy, the little store that he works at with his little friend with like the dyed red hair. Yeah. Dude, I love her like character. that girl had six lines, and I want to know mm-hmm. her entire life right? story. I was like, 
And I, I need even, to know everything about you. The actor who plays so the good. boss is a lot like uh, Lumberg in yeah. Office Space. Yeah, he's great. Or, yeah. or Ken Marino in uh, 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 the, the shoot Party Down. Yeah. Ken Reno and Party Down. It's like these bosses. He's a punching care, bag. Oh, they care yeah. about yeah. their jobs mm-hmm. so much. Like, yeah. You realize you're working with disgruntled teens who couldn't give a <laughs> shit yeah. about Best Buy or Electronics Junction. Really, uh, honestly, totally surprised. I went in this with like three level of excitement and I left with a nine level of excitement. This, it's always exciting so to find well a good new show. Yeah. Because there's so yeah. much stuff that we've seen over and over again. The same formulas, magician solving crimes. Yeah. You know, I mean, but it's so nice when you see something fresh. Even though it's based off a Stephen King novel that was written a while back, it's still good to see a good new show. I'm just excited to watch it. And it's I David E. Kelly. He's killing it. Yeah, he's... Big Little Lies. He, yeah. Yes, I mean, he's tearing it up right now. He, the, yeah. He's the unageless man. The dude just keeps writing it's it. A great, yeah, yeah great and writer. I like that this is a little bit like on the premium side of things. So, you know, we mm-hmm. have... F-words. Violence. We have swearing. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's a little more adult. You know, it's not the network. Sure. Kind well, it's of not for kids. Yeah, you're not yeah. watching yeah. with your kids. Not, yeah. not for kids. It's not Voltron. All right, Grace. All right, so Coming now we're week. gonna go to the British breakdown with David Griffin. The great British breakdown. There you go. Yes. Nailed it. Nailed it. Glad we rehearsed. Good job. Good job. Good job. Hire me, Buckingham Palace. That was not rehearsed. That was not rehearsed. That was all in the moment improv. Totally. It's a beautiful thing. You know me. Like if I was one of the beef eaters out. In front of mm-hmm. Buckingham Palace, I'd break in the first 15 seconds. Like, oh, I couldn't do that. Hey, man, what's up? Oh, fuck. Jack, I'm fired. <laughs> yeah. damn it. I, I would not be able to do I'd that. I'd be like, job. that's what she said. Ah, uh, I'll see myself out. Yeah. yeah. All right, go ahead, David. So break it down. The for Great us. British Breakdown. So I'm so happy that Josh has given me the segment because Emma has MMA Nation, which is awesome. I can't say MMA Nation. <laughs> I'm not giving you the segment. You earned the segment. I earned that segment. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate that. I earned that. So the first thing I want to talk about is the new trailer for season two of The Crown dropped today. Yes. Oh, I mean, with Claire Foy, who is just an incredible actress. It is HBO's. Most sorry, Netflix is the most expensive show that they make, and for all the right reasons, right. the costumes, the cast, Michael C. Hall, Dexter himself. I hope he's <laughs> playing an American. Is joining. Uh, I hope the he's cast. playing Dexter. I hope he's playing Dexter. <laughs> Dexter's coming to the Buckingham Uh-oh. Palace. Um, it's just they're gonna. It looks like they've aged her up since she's been queen for ten years mm-hmm. now. So the kids are gonna be older. I mean, they can take the series all the way to Diane and all that stuff. Sure. So I mean, it is such an incredible show. I'm so happy that that's back. So be sure to check out. Trailer looks the trailer. fantastic. Oh, it's gorgeous. And all the Emmy noms, they deserve it. You I can love see it where that money's going for yep, sure. For sure. Next, I want to talk about Broadchurch. Now I know for my brothers and sisters in the UK, you have already seen the season. You're like David White, still talking about the show. Well, because in the United States, we just got it yeah. maybe about five, six weeks ago. So we're a little bit into this season, season three, which I believe is the final season. It's a very good show. Yeah, yeah um, this is the last one. About time. a small town detective. They've still incorporated aspects of season one, but it's a brand new case. Wow. But the season one characters are still there. And but they're going to solve this one in the first season. Like it's not. Yeah, go they're not going to carry it. I think this is going to be it. But yeah. uh, it, it's a sexual assault case, of course. I mean, it's it's a heavy show. It's not a lighthearted show at it's all. It's so visceral. It's very it dark. So feeling yeah. that Broadchurch is like the killing. Remember the killing. It's like the killing. Um, and I, I'm kind of glad like that it it's done after three killing. seasons because I wouldn't want to be watching Broadchurch season ten. It's like. Yeah. It's too much. It's too yeah. heavy. Yeah. But it's very well done. Uh, I mean, Olivia Oh, my God. Uh, David Tennant is just, like, so mind-blowingly yeah. good. Yeah. It's cool. There's a shot in one of the episodes where you see David Tennant and um, Jodie Whittaker. You see both Doctor Whos ah. in the same shot, which is really cool. You have two yes. Doctor Whos there, which is awesome. Yes. Speaking of Jodie Whittaker, speaking of Doctor Who. Look at that Jody segue. W- mm. Nice segue. segue. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. That's called a segue. segue. Yes, yes. I love the theme music. Uh, we're going to talk about a show called Trust Me. Trust Me is a new show on BBC One drama starring Doctor Who herself, Jodie Whittaker. Really? She's great. And Break down she, Trust Me. I, I, trust I, Me is, okay, so it's a doctor show. Okay. Imagine that. Got it. Doctors, <laughs> cop shows, that's what they do on sure, TV. It's a doctor sure, show. Sure, sure. But she is a nurse at a hospital who wants to do more. Okay. She sees the medical system. She sees people being left, you know, not being taken care of because it's just overcrowded. There's just too much drama. I don't know what the healthcare system is like in the UK, but it talks a little bit about that too. So she kind of changes her identity mm-hmm. and becomes a doctor. She reads a lot. She's a smart girl. And she's kind of just feeling her way around trying to be a doctor. And she moves to Edinburgh, Scotland, moves her daughter, all the drama with that. She has a deadbeat ex who's horrible and trying to take money from her. But she becomes a doctor because she wants a better life for her daughter and she wants to improve the lives of others uh, helping uh, patients. So it looks like it's going to be a good like show. like a reverse Nurse Jackie almost? It's like a reverse Nurse Jackie, yeah. Ooh, so I, th- I think I'm going to keep watching it. Yeah, but it's okay. called Trust Me on BBC One. Trust Check me. that out. Um, that's all I really have for the Great British Do we have breakdown. any updates on when we may see Peaky Blinders? Do we have a Season release? four is finished production. Yeah. I imagine it's probably going to be early next year. Okay. If I had to guess after all the editing. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll get sure. a surprise. We'll get it late. Maybe December release, Ooh. maybe. That would be nice. Because we'll Crown's December 8th. Crown's December 8th. But 
December is like a no man's land for TV, except for streaming services, right. which dump all that stuff on us so that over the holiday breaks, so we can ignore our family during holidays and stream TV. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like the, Sorry, the, the, like I said, there, there's no off season anymore. Even during no. the holidays, they drop stuff, yep. so there's no off season. So British Love TV it. is alive and well. Dun, 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 dun. The dun, Great dun, British dun, 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 dun. Thanks, David. <laughs> Thank you. Dude, Thanks. love Thanks having it. Uh, and we'll do it again next week, probably. You'll be definitely on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, i got to figure out Thursday well, for I'll, next I'll week. I'll have but. some new shows to talk about. Yeah, yes. I can always talk British television. Hell yeah, you can. Oh There's my always gosh, something yeah. new coming out. And I can actually should. pronounce the titles, unlike m m m m All right. No offense, Emma. We love you. All right. Uh... Grace, let's do some Twitter questions. We are going to do a Twitter question okay. from our friend Belisarius Monk, at Monk1045. At Mrs. Grace Face, after the hype for shows like Mr. Robot and True Detective, are you worried about the second season of Westworld? Well, I couldn't be more excited for Westworld to eat <laughs> shit in season two, but that's because I hate that show, and I hate robots, and I hate the entire plot, and or couldn't care less about any of the characters, including the human ones. And who knows if the human ones are even human, or if they're all robots, but if they're all robots, I couldn't care less. So if it eats the tanker on this one, if it goes like, awesome. Thank you, HBO, for giving me the greatest Christmas present of 2019. <laughs> I cannot wait to see this show crash and burn. But if it does really well again, I'm going to be running my feet over with my car. Judge, Ooh. I would like to see Josh McCuga's testimony stricken from the record. <laughs> Sustain, David Griffin. Yeah, so we will just forget everything. No. Sustain. <laughs> Everything that Josh just said Can is I irrelevant. Get a gavel, please? Westworld season two will be fantastic. You have Jonathan Nolan, Christopher Nolan's brother. He's helped write The Dark Knight, Interstellar. This will be. Westworld is fine. It is in good hands. Like British television, it is alive, it is well, and it is kicking. There you go. I, yeah, I mean, Westworld was a slow burn for me. I had one of my best friends in the world worked on Westworld, so I had a very interesting, very detailed inside yeah. look into that. So um, I'm really excited to see what they come up with. I thought. I, it took me until like episode four to give two shits about yeah. it, but then I was like in. And Tandy Newton is a goddess. Remember in Christmas Vacation when uh, cousin Randy said, "Hey," uh, or cousin Eddie said, <laughs> "Hey Clark, don't you go fall in love with it? I'm gonna leave here. I'm gonna take it when I leave here next month." Mm -hmm. That's how I felt about Westworld. It was like mm -hmm. the first episode, and I was like, "Crap, we have eight more of these." So I was like, "I'm gonna take <laughs> this when I leave here in two months from now because I'm gonna have to watch it every Sunday because I know it's gonna push numbers and I know people are gonna like it." And I'm gonna listen. I am a an abject. I'm an object. Person, I will try and give it my best effort in season two. But if it's still the same old robot bullshit, I am going to be <laughs> out. Hashtag robot bullshit. Ro hashtag it robot bullshit. I don't even know how you spell robot, but I don't <laughs> like it. Um, do you want to do one more? Should we do I, one more? I think we can do okay. one more. Okay. I was going to do one from our friend Jonathan Peck. Yes. Uh, guys, what terrible episode that, um, uh, like, he's asking, what terrible episode of a show almost ruined a TV show for you? Oh, uh, uh, the B episode of Era. It oh, a, for me, it was the first well, like, first couple episodes of Spartacus were rough. Yeah. Like, I watched mm. Spartacus, the premiere uh, Stephen Tonight show on Stars. I was like, this show's like a bad 300. Then everybody's like, oh, stick with it. It's like one of the best shows you watched. And I went back and I was like, this show was awesome. But it okay. took about three or four episodes for it to get good. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. it was like finding its sea legs for a yeah. while. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I really, and I'm not like a big Modern Family fan. I mean, I mm. love the show, but I'm not like into it, into it. But there, there was like that one episode that was like the social media episode oh, God. where it was like Claire typing the whole time. And I literally, I was like, did I drop acid and nobody told me? It was like, like that movie what is Unfriended. This? Did you ever see that movie Unfriended? Where no, because based on that place, title, I would not see that. It was like, the whole movie it took was place so obnoxious. in like Skypes and all that thing like throughout the whole movie. You know, it, it, you know it was supposed to be called Cybernatural originally? Oh, oh. Oh yes, yeah, cybernatural. Oh, it was like it felt like they were like, "Oh shit, guys, we we gotta do another episode this week," and everyone was like, okay. eh, and they were like, "Yeah, we'll just edit something together with weird like." It's no. like the old like no. hokey crossover episodes where like Cheers crossover with Mr. Belvedere or something ridiculous mm -hmm. like that. Like those aren't shared universes. Yeah, it just feel, they felt like throwaway episodes. Yes, no, I agree. All right. Anyway, let's move on to the. <laughs> If you could pick a TV show to show your 12 year old self from right now, what would it be? 12 year old self. She was already watching like the this Simpsons. show. You should watch this. It would be probably uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, the cartoon, the animated series, which was just incredible. I didn't watch that until I was in my 
like mid to upper 20s, mm. and it's so good. So I would definitely tell myself to watch that. I was watching good cartoons at 12 years old. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was already very well aware of what was going on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that I would, I would have told myself to have watched, I think, Orphan Black, because yeah. I think as like a young, because that's when I started getting into theater and like figuring out my life. Oh, yeah. Like transitioning over from dance. Yeah. And I think that her, Tatiana uh, Maslany's performance would have been like, would have blown, I would have been like, oh, I think that would have been really inspiring. Yeah, that's a good a, show. As yeah. a young 12 year old with like, who's you about to like go into crazy mm-hmm. rebellious phase. You forget that that's one person. Yeah. You really do. She's, you know she's insane. You know what I wish I would have watched? She's like an alien. Yeah. Donald 12 would have been the right age. I think the show wasn't even on yet, but was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There you go. Because I come home, my dad was watching it. And I'm like, what do you watch? He's like, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm like, why do you watch this? It's a good <laughs> show. Dr. Griffin that's was amazing. watching Buffy Dr. The Dr. Griffin liked Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Wow. It's like, it's a good show. This, like, is, this is easy for me. I. Show my twelve year old self Stranger Things. I'm like, this is as oh, this is how no. good it is nice, right now. Yeah. This is it is how good it is. Go ride your bikes with your friends and find a Demi Gorgon. All right, <laughs> that's it. Collider TV talk here on a Thursday, um, 11 a.m. PST. We're live every day before we get out of here. David, Sir Anthony of Buckinghamshire, <laughs> Rochestershire. Yes, thank you. Where can the good people find you on the internet? Uh, when I'm not, like German, uh, right? you know, in the Scottish Highlands, it's my favorite place to be. I have been there. It's an <laughs> excellent place. Uh, I will be here on Clatter TV Talk next week on Monday's episode, but tomorrow you can find me on Clatter Movie Talk uh, with those lovely people. With the- <laughs> With those other I don't people. really know who's on the show tomorrow, so I'm just saying whoever is on those there. Others, they're not as cool as us. I'm sure they're great, whoever That's they are. Sure. Yeah. Grace Hancock. Um, and you guys can find me online everywhere at Mrs. Grace Face. And just so everybody knows, um, the Schmodown is an act. Grace and uh, Emma really actually like each other. And I actually like Grace, and she's amazing on the show. Those are characters they play, exactly. and we are on actual Collider TV talk as human beings. I'm just trying to, to put that onto Twitter, that people can actually enjoy each other outside of the movie trivia showdown as Christian Harloff walks by the back camera. I, like steam coming from his ears. <laughs> We're like, I mean, ah. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram, the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube, Clatter TV Talk Live here every single day, 11 a.m. PST. We'll see you next tomorrow with Sinead DeFreeze. <laughs> next tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow with Sinead DeFreeze. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.